Hi, everybody. Hi, Sue. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, so we are going to continue our Google uh, journey, and we are going to look at Google Sheets today. So uh, Google Sheets is Google's version of Excel. Uh, and I know, even looking back at my own journey with uh, spreadsheets, um, Excel was kind of the uh, the boogeyman uh, in uh, the Microsoft suite of tools that I was always a little bit hesitant my toes into figuring out how to use it effectively. Um, I didn't quite grasp it uh, when I was in college or even as a young professional, kind of what the power of a spreadsheet can do for you. Uh, and then I, I was just drawn in by uh, by the Google world uh, there, and uh, now I'm a devout Google Sheet user. I use it all the time. I love Google Sheets. Um, I, I think it's just helpful in like organizing things and making sure you see where everything's at. Uh, and there's so many things you can do with Google Sheets. And it, that can come from a spot of very basic use or very extensive use. There are ways that we can use Google Sheets that just like absolutely blow your mind, you know, and, and that's not what we're going to cover today um, because I don't even get to that level. I do a lot of stuff that's really cool, but it's not blow your mind uh, cool. Like what I can see some really extreme pros uh, do with, with Google Sheets that can be super impressive. So, um, so all that being said, uh, just like my other sessions, we're going to make sure that we go at a pace that works for everybody, um, kind of one that that is exploratory of the tool. And if you have questions at any time, like Sam said, drop them in the chat and we will pause from time to time to sort those out and get those questions answered. Um, so here's our kind of outline. Uh, I will drop this in the chat as well as I like to do. This kind of gives us a nice checklist of different features that we can use um, in Google Sheets, where thing, you know, just kind of a nice way of going about it and, and all that. So this is our kind of my Google Sheets rundown, uh, if you will. Um, and, you know, similar to our other Google tools, so anything with Google Drive, when we want to open up a new Google Sheet, um, I guess let's start with this, like, what is a Google Sheet? Well, it's, it's an Excel file that Google creates, you know, it's Google's version of Excel. Um, Google Sheets, what Google Sheets does is it, I like to like, I liken Google Sheets to a tool that does the work for you. Okay. So when we want to use Google Sheets, we're using it as a way to organize data. Uh, you're going to hear me say the word data a lot in this session because that's kind of what the nomenclature for, uh, for, for a spreadsheet is. So it's a way to organize data, but it's also a way to organize just your thoughts. It's a way to organize a lot of things because it puts everything into a, a cell, cells, rows, grids, all that type of good stuff. So it's a nice way to organize things, uh, to keep things on track, to kind of see where things exist. Um, and so to open up a new Google Sheet, we go to Google Drive go to new and then down to Google Sheets. And similar to the other tools, there are templates uh, that you can explore. Uh, and these templates are really cool. So, so like some of the other templates that I've shown in my other Google sessions, um, if you go to the general tab, there are some really cool templates in here that, that put a lot of the work for you. So some of the stuff that I'm gonna show as far as putting in different functions, um, making the data do different things, they're already done in a lot of these so for example there's a travel planner in here there's a team roster organization a wedding planner template calendars time sheets so many different things um project timelines like lots of different ways that you can leverage uh google sheets that are already done for you so you you can make sure you can explore those if you're interested in those templates but what we're going to do is we're going to jump into a new google sheet here that's blank for the time being then we're going to go into one that has data um, so this is what a new Google Sheet looks like, just kind of touring around where things exist and, and all of that good stuff. Um, your menu bar up here. So again, we want to name it like we would name the Google form that we talked about earlier tonight. We talked about this with Google Docs, slides, all that good stuff. Um, everything comes in as untitled. So we would just name this. And then down here we have our sheet. Okay, so, so in, if you're familiar with, with Microsoft and with Excel, Excel actually calls things notebooks, okay? So an Excel notebook. And then inside of that notebook, you have different sheets. You have different spreadsheets. Well, Google's very similar in that, that, that you, they don't call it a notebook, but that's essentially what it is. And you can create multiple sheets 
down here. And so when we do that, if we create multiple sheets, we're essentially creating multiple pages. Okay, so I want to point that out that we can have multiple pages or as they are called here sheets that have different information on them that you can jump back and forth between. Okay, so that's going to show you this over here. We also have our rows on this side and our columns on this side at the top. Okay, so our rows are numerical and our columns are going to be uh, with letters and that's and understand what cells we're looking at. So when we're looking at a spreadsheet, we have these different cells and each one of these cells is going to be a different combination of the column and then the number in the grid. Okay, so this is cell C6, this is cell A1. And that's really important when we're going to be exploring functions later on. Okay, that you know that when I say I want to reference a, a certain cell, you have to know or a certain range, you have to know where that starts, what, what cell starts that and that cell name would be whatever column and number it is. So you can always see also up here in the name box, what that is. So you can see that C4, C5 and so on. Okay, so we have our, our rows, we have our columns and our cells here inside of our sheet. And so that's kind of our basic overview of kind of the logistics behind what a Google Sheet is. Now, there are a lot of different things that we can do. This, our one hour that we have together today is, is definitely certainly like at the starter level of this, because like I said, we can get very advanced, but just know that if you wanna start exploring, the best way to get better with Google Sheets is to just do stuff in there. Like just start somewhere, start at the basics and then start just kind of seeing like, oh, I wonder if it can do that. And the odds are, if you wonder if it can do that, it can do that. You might have to do a lot of Googling and a lot of YouTube videoing <laughs> or a lot of talking to people that are good at, at spreadsheets, but it can probably do it. Uh, it's, it's really cool. And, and the, the misnomer of a few years ago was that um, Google Sheets actually couldn't do what Excel could do. And that was true back then. But then Google launched an update and now Google Sheets can do what 99% of what Excel can do. Uh, and it can do it for free, which is, which is pretty fantastic. Um, and so this is kind of just a point, and I realize, if you'll just wait a, one second, I have to plug my computer in. I never plugged it in when I got home from work. So I don't want it to die on us here. So give me one, one second to quickly plug this in so that way we don't lose power. That would be bad. All right, there we go. Now we're good. Um, so, so that's our Google Sheets um, kind of in a nutshell. You can see some other things as we go. We have our different menu options at the top. These are different things that we can insert. You notice we can insert images. We can insert Google Drawings, uh, forms. We can connect the spreadsheet to a Google form, uh, all sorts of stuff. A lot of this is also able to be inserted over here on our menu bar or our toolbar. Um, you have the formatting options. We're going to talk a little bit about formatting. Uh, but there are different ways we can bring in themes. We can format the numbers. Like Sheets is a lot. There's a lot going on here. And again, we want to kind of stick to stick to our basics. But just know that you can format. You can have different bold, italic, under under you know underlying strike throughs, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then conditional formatting, we're going to get to as well. So there's a lot of things going on here, but again, I want to give everybody just kind of that, that basic overview here. So to do that, we're actually going to jump into a spreadsheet here um, that I've got that's got like a list of names, pretty standard kind of looking spreadsheet here, a list of different numerical values for our data. Um, we're just calling these like different pay periods. I'm not sure that that really makes a whole lot of sense with the numbers in here, but it's going to work. Um, you know, so we've got our maybe our pay periods here and then our different numbers and, and everything here. So this is where, when we're looking at this, we wanna now kind of look at what we can do with sheets, okay? And so the first thing is you'll notice that we've actually formatted the top row up here to have different background colors. So inside of these cells, you have the option to format the colors by going to whatever cell you're clicked on, or if you highlight, click and drag and highlight a range of cells, you can change the fill color of them. Okay, so that's one of the formatting options. You can also change the text color. You can change the fill color. Anything you would like, you can change. You can change the font size, all that stuff. So same way you would change fonts or sizes on a Google Doc. Um, we can do that with our different 
uh, sell options here. And I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit so it's a little bit easier for everybody to see. Okay. So um, we can change all of these different options as far as formatting. Okay. But you'll notice I've got these denoted as different colors up here because I want to have them standing out as my header row. That's another Google Sheets word there. Um, the, the first row, because it has the titles of what is underneath of it, that is called a header row. Okay. Um, so we see that as this here. So first thing some functions. Okay. So a function is what we're telling the sheet to do. Okay, so this is something where it says, hey, Google Sheet, I want to know what the average pay for Betty is. And so I don't want to have to figure that out on my own. I don't want to have to get a calculator out. I want you, the Google Sheet, to do that for me. And so it'll do a number of different things. You can actually go up to the top right hand corner of the screen and you'll see there's this button right here where it says functions. And if you click on that, this is all of the different, this is the list of all of the functions that this Google Sheet can do. It has kind of the most commonly used ones up at the top. So sum is going to be addition. Uh, average is going to be average. Count is going to count how many times that particular thing exists or, you know, how many things are in that particular column, whatever. Max and min, but then you also have all of these other amazing things like in engineering and Googling. Um, this is actually pretty crazy. You can actually like have a Google Translate. So you can actually have, uh, you can put in a Google Translate function where if you say translate, uh, you know, F2 to Spanish, it'll actually do that and then put that into say like G2. So you can type in the word and then it would translate it automatically. Like it's just, it's amazing. Like I said, this literally does almost anything. Um, there's a lot in here. We are not going to get into much of it because like this is there's so much in here that I have not even explored. We're going to just stick to the basics. Um, so as far as like our equation here, so we want to average out the pay uh, for all of our people here. So when we insert any equation, any function, I should say, if we insert any function into a Google Sheet, we start with the equal sign. That's our basic, most fundamental principle of a Google Sheet is when you want it to do something, you have to tell it to start there and you have to start with equals. So you're going to type in the equal sign. And now, spoiler alert, Google does stuff for you because Google is really smart. And if you look at this, once I type the equal sign in, it says right here underneath, do you want to average B2 through E2? And then it even highlights it right here. And it says, these numbers look like you want to average that. And you say, you know what, Google? You're absolutely right. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to average out that pay. And so all you have to do is hit enter. And then it says, all right, that's the function. Do you want it? You good with that? So, yep, you hit enter again. And now you have your average, 45.75. That's averaged out. And then Google got even smarter, like within the last couple of months. And it says now, it looks like, according to this, you want to average out all of the rest of these rows down here. Do you want to do that? And you can say, you know what, Google? I do. And you can hit this checkbox right here for a suggested autofill. Congratulations. We just averaged out all of the data in about two seconds. And we didn't really have to do anything except type an equal sign. Now, the reason why that all works, I'm going to undo that. The reason why that all worked is because of the header row. Okay. So because the header row has the word average in it, Google read the sheet, sees the word average, and then automatically thinks that that's what we want to do. If I take the word average out and then type the equal sign in, oh, it's still doing it because I have pay in there. Let me just remove all of that. Hang on. Okay. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Now, if I hit equals, it still wants me to do it. Gosh darn it. So I can't even trick it by like removing the header row. It's like, no, it wants to, it thinks you should average all of that. So it, makes, it also probably listening to us too, probably talk too, because that's how smart Google is. They're always listening. Um, but, you know, so we're going to try to avoid that. We're going to show you how you can actually just type in the equal sign here. Okay. Or I'm sorry. All right. Let's, I'm a little flustered. Google is not supposed to know all of, all of that. They're so smart. So let's finish up this here. So, so what we want to do is we want to actually like put in this data ourselves or put in this function ourselves because we got to start somewhere. Okay. So we do equals and then we type in what the function is that we want to do. 
So if we wanted to average this out, we would type in average and then we can select it. And then we put a parenthesis in. Okay, so this is important. We put a parenthesis in because now what we want to do is we want to tell the spreadsheet where, where the data is that we want it to average. Okay, so as we write bigger functions, as we become better Google spreadsheet users, we're going to do a lot of different things where we're calling out different data from across maybe a lot of different places in this spreadsheet. And so you want to know, you want to put the value in. You hear the example. So if you do B2, and then we say through the end of the data range. And so in this case, the end of the data range is E2 over here. So it's not this. If we put in, I say through that, and if we put in the dash, that actually wants to subtract it. And we don't want to subtract it. So what we use is we use the colon. Okay. So the colon is like, okay, we're going to go from here to here. And so then we'll type in the end range, which would be E2. And then now we want to close that parenthesis. So when I close that parenthesis, what that's doing is that is, I got zoomed in and I got, now I am too far in. There we go. So when we close that parenthesis, that's telling the sheet that that's the end of our function, that that's all it has to do. Okay. So we say, I want to average out B2 through E2, and then we hit enter. And now we have our average. So we've got our average. Here it is. This is the average of uh, Betty's pay. And now what we might want to look at is how can we then make it go all the way down? Because we want to average out everybody's pay. And we don't want to have to type in the same function over and over and over again, 15 times, or in some spreadsheet cases, hundreds of times. That wouldn't be fun. So there's two ways you can do it. You can click in there and you see we have our function there and it all revolves around the blue box. So if I zoom in just a, maybe a little bit more, you can see the little blue box in the corner of the cell. And I could click on that. You see when I go over the blue box, I get those crosshairs. I could click on that and drag it all the way down and release it. And when I do that, you'll notice that now we're averaging out B8 through E8. That worked, brought the equation all the way down or the function all the way down. But I'll show you a little trick, okay? So to make this easier, because sometimes we have spreadsheets that have hundreds of rows of data and you want that, that formula or that function to go all the way down all those rows, it would take a while to drag it all the way out. So here's the trick. Go over to your blue box, get your uh, little crosshairs there and just double click on the blue box, boom. Shoots it all the way down. You don't have to click and drag. You don't have to worry about your uh, using a trackpad and your dexterity and using a mouse. Just double click, shoots it all the way down. It finds the last empty row. So that's why it stops. If I had more data, so if I had, say, let's take Tim here, let's highlight all of Tim, we'll copy it, and then we'll put Tim in row 18. And then now if I wanted this to go and I double clicked, it still won't go because it's recognizing that there's no data in these cells, okay? So it stops at the first blank row. So that's just something to keep in mind that if you have a blank row in your data set, you're gonna have to find it all the way down and then like continue the function down manually on that one. Or you would just have to maybe copy it and paste it in or, or drag it all the way down. Cause I can take this and drag it and then it comes up with this div slash zero, but that's because nothing exists for it to average. But if I take that Tim that I copy and paste it in, now it works because it has something to average. So just be aware that if you see this very common error, that's basically saying that there's nothing there. Uh, it can't work. So just, just know that that's the case. And that's because there's nothing there for it to average. So that's why it does not have anything there. Okay, so that's the way we can we can average our our information out. Um, another one that we can do. So this is like a little bit of formatting as well. Um, one of the things that Excel is known for that sheets are known for is their grid lines. Well, when you actually open up a spreadsheet for the first time, the grid lines don't exist. So like if I was going to print this, um, they they're there, but they're very light, right? So what I might want to do is like down here at the bottom, I'm going to highlight this whole row. And then I want to format this to have a line 
at the bottom of this. It's more like defined. It's very black that stands out. And if you go up to your menu bar at the top, you'll notice there's this option for borders. Okay, so we're doing a little formatting here. So we're going to go borders, and I can't actually put like black boxes around everything in that bottom row. Or what I can do is just select maybe the bottom border. And now when I do that, you see I have this clearly defined line at the end of my data. And now I might be able to say, you know what, I want to add up how much money each one of in during each one of these pay periods. So in this case, I'll go equals sum of B2 through B15, close the parenthesis, and now I have that number. So it added up all of these numbers and put it across. And then now I should be able to just drag this across to all the other ones and it adds it all up for me. So I don't have to keep typing that function over and over and over again. So again, super helpful in just speeding the process up and, and making sure that you don't have to recreate everything over and over again. You can just click and drag or you can double click and it'll autofill it all the way across or all the way down, I should say. So those are a couple of the quick, easy functions uh, as far as averaging, addition, you know, sum, all that stuff. You can see lots of other options up here at the top. Um, but those are kind of some of our numerical, uh, you know, ones that we would use and also a little bit of formatting. The other thing that I want to point out, especially, uh, maybe I'll point that out, this out in the next data set that we're going to use because it, it actually makes a little bit more sense, I think, in that one. Um, but if I'm looking at this, the other thing is, you know, you see this is all nice and pretty with the numbers. And that's because I highlighted all of it ahead of time. And I'm using the formatting options up here. So you can go to format and uh, you can, I'm sorry, you go to, yeah. Number, sorry, yeah, format, number, and then I put picked currency. Now, the other thing that we can do, though, is we can say, you know what, I don't want it to be currency, and it's right here on our, our main toolbar. You can see it says format as currency. So if you don't want it to be currency, maybe it doesn't make sense as currency, you can just uncheck that. Oops. Hang on. Why isn't it removing it? Oh, I have to tell it to be something different. Sorry, that's why. Go to number. There it goes. So I have to go to here, click on the one, two, three, go to number, and then you see it just changes it to number. And the other thing is, if I highlight all that, and I don't want two decimal places, you can see you have increase and decrease decimal points. So if I decrease the decimal point, now I don't have any decimal points. If I increase the decimal point, and it'll be most noticeable because these are all whole numbers here, but over here on the average, if I keep increasing the decimal point you'll see you keep averaging out and it keeps adding different decimal places to it so you can increase decrease decimal points you can also change it to currency you can change it to percents you can change it to just numbers you can change it to a lot of different things so you can always change your text uh, to different stuff this is also where we're formatting like date and time as well so if you have different information in there about date and you want it to look a certain way you can also go into this area here and change it to different dates and different times as well. Okay, so lots of different ways that you can kind of make your numbers look a little bit different. All right. Any questions so far? I don't have any questions. I'm okay. Just I'm following along fine. Thanks. Great. Um, so when we're looking at like the number sets here, okay, there's a, one more thing I wanna showcase with this particular like data range. Um, and if we're looking at this and I'm going to say, you know what, I wonder who is making the most money averaging out, like who's made the most in our pay period here. So let's change this all back to currency. So we've got our numbers over here. So now what I wanna do is I wanna figure out who's got the most, you know, who's making the most in average pay. And to do that, we can sort our sheet, okay? And when we do this, we wanna sort a range. Um, I, I say this because like, I, I like sort range a lot because you're calling out a specific area of the sheet to sort. You could like highlight everything and then sort it, but I don't necessarily like doing that, if, especially as you get bigger sheets. So as an example, 
um, I use a Capital One card, and we use it for everything. We are we are points uh, mongers in this family. We love the the free points that the credit cards give us, right? So I we use the card for everything, and then we use it to to pay to go on trips and stuff. And uh, I can download at the end of the year a cumulative summary of what we spend our money on. Like it'll give us every line item. And it's a frightening thing to see how much money you actually spend at like McDonald's or Walmart. Um, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that Amazon took that much money from me. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's something. But anyways, I dig that is because it gives it all in sections. So like you'll see like underneath of like, I can, I can have the spreadsheet that it gives me and it'll say Walmart. And then it'll like categorize all of the different Walmart expenditures in that one section of the sheet. And so I might want to go into that Walmart section and just sort it to see what was the most expensive trip we had to Walmart that year. So to do that, I would sort it, but I only want to sort that one part of the spreadsheet. I don't want to sort the whole spreadsheet because that'll mess everything up. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to click in the top left corner of the range that you want to sort. So in this case, we're going to sort everything from name down to top down here in Todd's average pay. We don't wanna do the sums because that's gonna screw it all up because that's just not part of our data. So what I would suggest is if you click up in name and then go down, move your mouse down to F15, you can hold the shift key down and click. And when you hold the shift key down and click, it highlights everything that was from here to here. So you can see all of that is highlighted now which is helpful because now we can sort it. And to sort that, we're going to right click anywhere inside of the highlighted box. So we right click and you'll see there's an option to sort my range. And when I do that, I open up this box, it says sort range. And this is a, why I dropped this terminology earlier. You see where it says data has a header row. We do, because if I didn't, pick this and I sorted by column F, it's going to actually sort the average pay into my data, which wouldn't be good because that's not a part of my data. I want to sort it based on the average pay. So if I select data has a header row, it's essentially going to freeze that row at the top and then allow me to sort everything else. Now here's the other thing that's a little confusing. A actually equals zero. And so if you sort A to Z, it would be the lowest amount at the top down to the highest amount. So if we wanna find out who does the most work and gets paid the most, it would be Z to A. And then we hit sort. And now we see that Maria has been paid the average most amount at $48.5, okay? And so it's sorted everything out. We see Betty is now at uh, F, she is now in fourth place of average pay. Okay. So now none of these numbers change down here because we didn't actually manipulate the data. So like the functions all stayed the same. We just sorted it to make it work for us. Okay. So again, that's going to be highlight the range that you want, right? Click sort range, and then choose your row that you want to sort by. And then it'll sort it. So super helpful for like sorting a particular area of uh, your Google Sheet. Okay, let me look at my list. I'm trying to think if there's anything in particular in this sheet that makes more sense than going to the next sheet because the next one is pretty cool. So um, so I think the only thing I'd like to do in this one, and we're gonna zoom out uh, a bit for this, um, what we're going to look at here, I'm going to actually remove our uh, averages down at the bottom or our sums down at the bottom. Now, what we can do here is, and I teased this in the Google Form session, was about creating charts. Okay, so we're creating charts based off of the data in our spreadsheet. And the chart creator inside of Google Forms is really user friendly. Like, it, it's pretty great. Um, now, here's the key. So here's a couple of tips for this. When you want to create a chart, my suggestion is to, just like we did with sort range, is to highlight the data that you want included in the chart. Um, this is important because once you highlight the data and then you go up to our bar up at the top, you should see an option to insert chart. 
You can also go to insert and chart, either one. But when you have the data highlighted, that when you go to insert the chart, it's the computer, the spreadsheet is going to automatically see like, oh, they want to insert that. That's the data they want to chart is whatever's highlighted. And this is confusing to people because if I click, like I just like, oh, I want to click over here. And now I'm going to insert a chart. Well, if I four is highlighted and then you go insert chart, it's confused. It's like, oh, there's no data. chart is literally just I4. And there's nothing in I4. So it doesn't make a chart. Now, if we delete this chart and then we highlight our data, and now we go up to insert chart, bada bing, bada boom, we get a chart with data. So putting that like highlight in earlier just makes it a lot more user friendly to insert those charts. Now you can do a lot with this chart after the fact. So for example, if I make it a little bit bigger here, you can see this has got everybody's pay periods in it and their average pay. And it's all a graph down here. And you can change the chart types. You can see there's lots of different chart types that you can go through and you can choose depending on which one makes sense for you. The column chart makes the most sense for this particular data. And then you notice the data range. So A1 through F15, perfect. That's what we want. And then you can also change the axis. So right now the axis, X axis is the name, which is what we want. That makes sense. But if for some reason you maybe wanted the, the pay periods to be the X axis up at the top, you could switch that around if you really wanted to. I'm not too concerned about that because this is the chart that we want. Now the series down at the bottom, what this is, is this is showing what is being shown in the chart. These are the different series up here. So basically it's taking the columns and making them the series. And you know, we don't really want pay periods two and three in there. Maybe we just want to compare pay periods one and four. So what I can do is click on the three dots here and remove it. And you'll notice as I do that, it takes it out of the chart. So it's my way of customizing the chart kind of after the fact. And if you want to add those back in, you click add series and you can add them back in. You can move them around, um, you know, adjust them, all sorts of good stuff in there. So, so that's adding charts into your sheets, which can be super helpful for just visualizing data. The problem with charts sometimes though, is that they take up a lot of space. And so it's hard to have them work in the same area that your data set is. So this is my tip for that. If you look on your chart and you go to your three dots up in the top, you can actually select move to own sheet. And what that's gonna do is move the chart. You'll notice down here at the bottom, we now have a chart in its own sheet. So we have our data set here, and then we go chart three. And instead of it being a box that floats around with the data, it's its own chart, its own sheet that we can see, which is just more helpful, more user friendly for, uh, I guess I sent that one over there. Let's move that. More user friendly to being able to see it. And then if you like hover your mouse, you can see that it tells you what those numbers are specifically. So again, just something that's super helpful for like visualizing uh, what your data looks like. All right, so that's that's a that's working with numbers. Okay, so that's that's a little bit of working with numbers. Again, like I said, you can go a lot bigger with this, a lot further. Um, but I want to show you another spreadsheet that we can do that's got text in it. Okay, and with the text spreadsheet, what we're going to be able to do is do a lot of different things as far as formatting, making the spreadsheet, do a couple of really cool things, uh, different stuff like that. So we're going to be able to kind of manipulate it a little bit, a little bit more um here so so as i'm looking at this you can see what i've got i'll zoom in just a little bit so everybody can see it a little bit better um what i have here is a list of students okay so this has got their name their gender uh their class what major they're in and then the sport that they play and i've got a whole bunch of them okay so when you look at this it's pretty bland data right now like it just doesn't stand out everything's the same 
So my first suggestion would be for this to make it a little bit easier to look at is to take column or row one here. And anytime you click on the number or on the letter, it'll highlight the entire thing. And then any formatting you do will automatically apply to future cells in that row or in that column. Okay. So I want to make the first row here, my header row, I'd like to bold that text, make it a little bit bigger than the data, and then also maybe like change the font. This is also where I can put in a different background color, fill color. And in this case, you know what, I don't really want the whole row to do that. So I'm just going to highlight these change that. So now I've got this like nice looking, like easier to kind of identify row. The problem is, is when I scroll down to look for Todd down here, my header row is gone. And this is something that really is kind of annoying with uh, spreadsheets. And again, if I scroll over, I can't see what the name is. It doesn't go with it. So this is a, a really cool option that you can do inside of Google Sheets. You can go to view and then freeze. And when you go to freeze something, you can actually freeze a row or columns to then stay in that spot. So we're gonna freeze row one. And now you see there should be like a gray line right here that comes across. And what that's gonna allow me to do is now as I scroll down, the header row comes with it. So that way when I do get down to the bottom and I can see, oh yeah, that's what I put in that column. Similarly, I can freeze the first column and then as I scroll over I can kind of just see like oh yeah Betty plays basketball so you can freeze those different views so that way as you slide your data one way or the other you know what you're looking at so that way you know one of the things that when I see a spreadsheet that's not like this often I'll click on it and then you can see it highlighted you know but like sometimes over here it's like all right that's in uh, row four okay that's Bob versus just being able to Kind of scroll over and see it as it moves so so that's just a nice little helpful like tip to be able to freeze those rows and freeze those columns other fun formatting things okay so maybe uh you want this is a little bit boring as well so we want to mix it up a little bit if you highlight we can highlight the whole thing if you highlight the row there also is an alignment option for text rotation so that's in your toolbar up here and then you can all you can adjust your text to tilt up, tilt down, uh, tilt vertically, like all sorts of fun stuff. Or you can just have it be normal. So that's one way you can do it. Uh, this text wrapping is also where you know you can have stuff that if you do wrap the text, and then now if I drag this column in, it keeps it there. If I didn't have text wrapping on and I had it just the the run through. As I drag that column, it's just going to kind of like hide whatever's in that column. Okay. Um, the other thing is if I go just regular overflow, then it's going to bleed into the next column if nothing is in that column. Okay. So here's your quick tip for this. So as you can see, I have now moved column E over too far. And it is actually we'll do we'll do this one. And so this one is is hidden. Okay. And I know that um, I want to see the whole thing, but I don't know how far out to go. Like if I drag it, like, is that good enough? Is that not good enough? Oftentimes this works really well with uh, names too. So like if I drag this column in, it's like, oh, some names are longer than others. Stephanie's getting cut off here. So here's your little tip, okay? If I want this to snap, you can tell it to snap to the longest piece of text that's in that row or in that column. Take your mouse up to the line. So for the row, I'm sorry, for the column here. And you see when your mouse goes to be able to drag the column width, if you double click on that, it automatically adjusts the width of the column to whatever the longest text is in that column. So it's just a nice helpful like and it puts it perfect too so even like b you see how b has all this extra white space in it c2 boom now it's a nice clean spreadsheet
I like clean spreadsheets. So it cleans it up a little bit. Those double clicks are super helpful for formatting and, and making your spreadsheet look really a lot nicer. Also helpful too, if like I adjust say the, uh, the, the size of this. So I'll make this all 12. You can see like when I adjusted the size, everything was screwed up. And so now I would just go through and just double click quickly all the tab or all the rows and all of the columns and everything snaps out to the appropriate size. So just a helpful, helpful little tip tip there. Now, how about some other things? Okay, so there's a couple other features that are that are pretty 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 great here. One of them is going to be the filter option. Okay, so filter views are incredibly valuable, especially when you're collaborating with people in a spreadsheet. So if Sam and I are collaborating in this spreadsheet and she's looking at this, and I'm actually going to undo the freeze on the column, but um, that's not a thing. It doesn't matter for what I'm going to do, but I just want to do it for looking at it. Um, so if she's looking at this and she's trying to just kind of check names and I'm looking at it, but I am the baseball coach and all I want to see are my baseball players. Okay. So if I go through and I do the sort like we did last time where I highlight everybody, and then I sort them and I do a sort range. The problem is when I do that and I move them all in alphabetical order, one, I'm still gonna see everybody. And two, Sam's looking at it, maybe she's looking at the majors. I just screwed the data. up, So now she's all messed up because I put it all out of order for her. So here's what you use. What we're gonna use is these filter views up at the top. So there's an option to create a filter. And what I like to show is the little drop down arrow right here next to create a filter. Okay. And what that's going to do is that actually does what's called a filter view. And it's different than a normal filter. If I put a filter on and then I organize this stuff, that's still going to mess up Sam's view. And I don't want to do that to Sam. I like Sam. I don't want to mess up her view. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a filter view. And this is incredibly powerful. So I create the filter view. And you'll notice everything changes to black because what this is doing is this is essentially creating like a transparency over top of the data. So if Sam's in the same document, she does not see the black come over here. This is just me in like a shadow world right now, like working with the data and manipulating it. And then I get these little funnels next to the header row and I can name this filter view baseball. And then I'll go over to sport played, click on the funnel, go down to the bottom and uncheck everything that's not baseball, hit okay. And now I just get the baseball players. And as I'm doing this and I'm seeing that, okay, here's all my baseball guys, Sam's view in the back end has not changed one bit. She doesn't know that I'm even doing this right now. And if I look at this and I say, you know what? Bob actually just quit the baseball team. He's now on the basketball team. So I can change that. And then now when I remove the filter view, so I leave the filter view by hitting the X, you'll see that Bob's updated. That would have updated in real time for Sam. But then when I go back to my filter view, the baseball filter is there. Click on it. Bob is no longer on the baseball team. So Bob doesn't show up anymore. And it's just the baseball guys. So it's really a cool way to like, filter out and just identify the different aspects of your spreadsheet, you know, without having to manipulate it, delete things, change things, move things. Like you just create these different filter views. So we'll do another one. So we'll go create filter view. This time we'll go, uh, we'll look for just freshmen. And so now we'll sort by the class. We'll clear the values and just select freshmen. And hit okay. And now we just have the freshman. So it's, and then we could also go another step further where we say, you know what, I just want the freshman golfers. Now I just have the freshman golfers. And if I close that out, and if I change uh, Lisa, who's a sophomore, so she wouldn't come up, who's a freshman. So John has decided to go out for the golf team, change his data, go back to that golf filter, that freshman filter view. Now John is on, I can show up as a freshman golfer. So these filter views are super nice for like organizing and, and looking at your different uh, data a little bit differently. 
super cool, super cool way of, of looking at things. One of my favorites. Um, okay. So we have 12 minutes left. Okay. One thing I want to make sure we show is also uh, format, more formatting stuff. I'm a big fan of formatting. So there is a way you can format this that um, a lot of people recognize and it's alternating colors. Okay, so we look at spreadsheets, sometimes they're hard to read. Um, you can put alternating colors into a Google Sheet. If you go to format, down to the bottom, alternating colors. And then now, oh, because I'm in that cell, I did that. So let me just do this, let me highlight here. That up. Let's do alternating colors. You can see now I can change the style here and I can do different colors that then are just a bit easier on the eyeballs. And then if I was to print this, it would also have those alternating colors. So it's just easier to kind of look at the data and read through it. Okay, I'm going to remove that formatting. Actually, I want to redo that. Ah. Okay, so I removed all the formatting there. That's okay. Put another color back in the background. There we go. Okay, now we're back. So the last thing I want to show, um, maybe the last thing, we'll see how much time we have left, is there's also this option for what's called conditional formatting. And this is again, like the biggest thing with sheets is telling the sheet to do stuff for you, okay? So with conditional formatting, it's literally called putting in a rule, okay? And with the rule, you're telling the spreadsheet that if this is this, do this, okay? So I will highlight all of my data that I wanna put into the conditional formatting rule. So I've got my data highlighted. I'll go up to format, go to conditional formatting. Now it's got my range A2 to E27. Perfect. That's where we wanted to go. Now it says format the cells. So now here are the rules. So you can see it starts with format cells if, currently it's set to is not empty. But what I wanted to say is, does the text contain the value is freshman? And now you can see like the formatting style and how it updates over here. If I want freshman to be light green, great. Now I hit done. So now the text contains freshman is gonna be light green. I can add another rule for the same range. This time format the cells if text contains, we'll say golf, we'll make that light blue. And so you see, now it automatically formatted all of those cells, but then this is the cool thing. that it, You know what, Jill is actually not a senior, that's a typo, she's a freshman. As soon as you type in freshman, it changes to green. She's also, Jake is also not a baseball player, he's a golfer, it changes it. Because it's saying, if it's inside of this range and you tell it to be this, it will automatically change it to that, or do that to it. And there's more conditional formatting rules in there. So if I go back into the conditional formatting area, you can see if I go text contains is one of them, but it's also text does not contain. It is exactly this, the date before, after, even number wise, greater than or equal to, you know, in between, there is a ton of different stuff that you can tell it to do. So, you know, you can really color code your spreadsheet and your data depending on how you want to do it. And you don't have to go through and find all the freshmen, highlight them all, and then change the fill color in the background. Like you just put a conditional formatting rule in and then the spreadsheet does the work for you. That's the biggest thing about spreadsheets. They do the work for you. You just have to tell them to do it, okay? So the last thing that we can also do here is we can go through, and this is one of the cool ones that uh, I really like. So we're gonna go into column F here. And we'll say like, uh, so this is maybe we're collecting fees. So they paid their fee. Okay, so I wanna go through and I wanna mark if they've paid their fee or not. But again, I don't wanna have to go through, double click and type in like yes and no. 
to all of them. That would take way too long. So this is the last uh, tip of the night. Um, when we do this, and we wanted to maybe do an autofill for us, we use what's called data validation. And this is one of my other favorite things to do. Actually, I got one more tip I want to show everybody. But um, data validation. So we go to data. And then down here, you can see there's an option for data validation. And when I select that, I get this box that says, you know, what's the cell range? Well, right now it's just F2. That's fine. You could highlight the whole thing if you want, but I want to show you a different trick for that. And this time we'll say like, you have a different options here. So like if you want it to only be a date, you can put that in there. But list of items, we'll type our number or our values. So yes or no. And then we can maybe put like pending. And then this is the cool part where we say show drop down list in the cell. And then you can also say on invalid data, you can either say show warning or reject the input. And this would mean that if you put reject input, that means that if somebody tries to put something different in that cell, it won't let them like it won't let them fill it out. Like you have to put one of these three things in that cell and that's it. So it's validating the data that you put into that cell. Okay. And now we can say save. And then check this out. See this little drop down menu here? Now I can just select that. And I can go through and I don't have to type it over and over again. The other thing that I can do is when it's blank, I can use our trick from putting in the averages. And I can double click on that. And it auto fills that all the way down to the end of the list. So now I can say yes, pending, no, yes. No, and you know what? I need some conditional formatting for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all the cells, go up to conditional formatting, add the rule that if the text contains yes, turn it green. And if the text contains no, let's turn it red. And so now as I fill out, I can see it in real time changing colors. So you add the data validation, the conditional formatting together, and you make a spreadsheet that really works for you, which I, I think is a, a fun way to kind of organize and make things kind of go. Um, so um, so that's, that's that. Now, there are some things that I didn't get to today, uh, just ran out of time. Pivot tables is one. Uh, that is a fairly complex thing to use. Um, so, you know, I don't have time for five minutes of doing that. Just know you can put in a pivot tool. Um, that's gonna, our pivot table, that's in data. And then pivot tool, you just have to like format it the right way. Um, you know, there's there's different YouTube videos out there that can help. That's also maybe like a, a Google Sheets 2.0 uh, thing. One other option that I didn't get a chance to show, which is pretty cool, and I'll show it right now because I do have a little bit of time. So if we do uh, Betty, of, I don't know, Sanders. So here's the thing that a lot of people get a little frustrated with is if they get a spreadsheet and it has two names in it and they want the first name in one column and the uh, last name in another column, and they think it's a big pain in the butt to be able to have to, to do that. We'll insert a new column to the right of that. And then this is kind of neat. We'll highlight the whole column and then in formatting, I'm sorry, in data, you actually have the ability to go in and say split text to columns. And you can say, you know what? I want it to detect and separate it based on space. And check it out, Betty and Sanders. I just automatically split them apart. So then you don't have to go through and like split them all apart yourself. You just use the data and then split text to columns option. It splits them up automatically which is pretty cool option. That's like pretty new, uh, relatively new uh, thing. The last thing that I'll show is if you want checkboxes, you can have checkboxes as well. So this case, we will go ahead and add in from, uh, let's see, insert checkbox. And now let's double click that. Oh, nope, see there's nothing in this row, so it doesn't think to go down. So I have to drag it down. I have all my check boxes. You can also check the box. So when something gets done, 
get that satisfaction of checking your box <laughs> of it. So um, there's so much in Sheets. And I think we got a really good handle on, uh, you know, scratching the surface here. Um, there's definitely a lot more that you can do, but that's a pretty good amount for an hour. We looked at numbers, we looked at text, we looked at a lot of different things here. Uh, and yeah, so I'll take the uh, last couple of minutes for any questions that anybody has. Uh, but if not, thanks for hanging out for the evening. Um, it was a good chat on Google tonight. I think you answered all the questions that I was planning on asking. Um, anything from Suzanne? Um, I don't. I don't have anything real specific. I've, I've worked with Excel a lot with numbers, but not text, so that was really interesting. Um, so when these uh, Google Sheets, when you go to like print multiple copies, say you you know like for a board meeting or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, often with Excel, I'll, it looks perfect on the screen and then you go to print it and it, you know, takes up four pages instead of one. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is there a, is there a trick to get it to, to, you know, compress to print on a single page? So sort of, so like when you go to print, so you can see, like, I'll go to, uh, to print this and we've got you know, Todd is our last uh, guy there. Um, so when we go to print, it should do this scale, okay? So like you have the option to select the different scale you wanna print it in, which can be either normal or, you know, in this case, let's actually go down and see how much we can kind of get out of this. You know, ultimately it's gonna be, you know, the potential that we're, we're gonna run out of, you know, space anyways um and have to go to a second page i don't know exactly what number we would be at with that oops i just kept trying to do too much there there we go um so if we go to print let's see yeah so now we have two pages so you can change your scale and say like fit to width and that's going to kind of scrunch everything in or um fit to page and now when you do fit to page it's going to put everything on one page when you do fit to page though then the text is going to get smaller Sure. So like sure. it's going to fit everything on there, but if you have a whole lot of stuff, it's going to be, could be itty bitty. Um, the other thing is I would suggest like switching between portrait and landscape too, because like in this case, the columns are not very, it's not a whole lot. It's not really a wide document. It's more long. Mm -hmm. So if I flip it to portrait and then say fit to page, I'm going to get more in there. So yeah, it sheets gives you a lot of different options to kind of like mess with that. You can also change your margins. So, you know, like, oh, I'm going to print it in wide margin to give me a little bit more room you know, on each side. So, and I like this too, because it's kind of, you know, it's not super complex. It's like, yeah, wide, narrow, normal, <laughs> you know, like it's not a, a crazy number that I have to worry about, like fit to page, fit to height, fit to width. Like, so you can, you can definitely adjust uh, a little bit on that and you can get more in depth with this too. So like, here's the grid lines without grid lines, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, you can, you can get a lot of pretty, pretty intricate with like how you want it to print and show up on uh, for whatever your board packet has in it um, for them for that particular spreadsheet just inside of the print view option. Okay. Yeah. And if something's still not working right, that's when you might have to cancel out of the print view and maybe adjust, you know, your column widths or, or stuff like that. Um, sure. Yeah. But that's, it's pretty good. Like about like, no, I just want to try and fit as much as I can on this page and it just does it for you. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That was all I had. Okay. I feel like I've had a custom class here. So. Yeah, it's all you, all you, Sue. <laughs> yeah, and you came up with a good question too. I like that. Yeah, um, that was good. Addition okay. for printing, yeah, because it definitely is different than Excel printing. So, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ben. And um, I believe you have some other sessions that'll be coming out in July. Yeah, kind of we've got our Google Photos. Yeah. Google Photos in July. That one is going to be super fun. I am jacked up. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I will um, end this meeting and just keep an eye out on the CCH website for more events. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you guys. very much. See ya. Yep. Bye-bye.